Here's a boat I wanted to show you. This is the new Azimut S10, designed by Alberto Mancini. It's his first boat for Azimut and is a 100-foot sports cruiser and has one of the most unique interiors we've seen on any boat. So let's jump on board and take a look and I'll show you around. So here we are on board the Azimut S10. It's powered by a pair of 2,600 horsepower MTU engines, giving a top speed of up to 35 knots and a constant cruising speed of 28 knots. Now, the design by Mancini is all about luxury villa style living. So you can see there's a kind of cascade effect. So this is the bathing platform, which opens up to create a beach club area with lounging, almost bean bags, a huge garage that you can fit the tender and a couple of jet skis and sea bobs, and then steps up to what is the main deck level, which again has all interconnected with the bathing platform and the sport fly up on top, but it all cascades down to create this multi-level living area. And you can see there's a glass balustrade instead of a transom so that you get a view down from all of the decks looking down into the sea. Then this main deck is divided into two separate elements of the cockpit. So there's this lounging area right at the stern with two cosy sofas facing each other. And then you can see that the cockpit combing itself isn't solid. It's got a gap so that you can see through there to the sea. And in fact, these elements here hinge upright to become a prop for an awning which will cover this whole area, but also to give even more unfettered access and even better views of the sea. So on here, there's two matching sides to the wet bar, huge wet bar, lovely teak doors, all the usual perspective findings of fridges and ice makers. And another one over on this side, which can be fitted with grills. These have just been left blank at the moment. And then you can see these beautiful carbon fiber steps leading up to the next level. First, let's just see what's the rest of this cockpit. So I talked about it being divided into separate areas. So that's the sort of raised stern area. And then there's a small, a small step down into the next more protected part of the cockpit. And you can really feel that protection because the flybridge overhang gives it some shade and protection from the top. You've got these very sociable and almost comforting sofas that enwrap, wrap around you and provide a really cozy feeling of being safe on board and inside the yacht with walkways down either side so that it feels a little bit more central and protected from the elements. Now this is a clever area, so the doors themselves slide across and from here on in there is access into the interior of the yacht. But this dining area is somehow sort of linked to the two. You can either leave these doors open and then close these ones inside or vice versa. So it can be a completely enclosed area or by closing these inner doors, which are a rather nice semicircular design, you can keep the saloon itself inside and then the dining area becomes part of the outside connected to that cockpit outside. It's a neat idea. Now the other thing about this dining area is that because it's partly in, partly out, it's also got a large drop-down window on this side. So you can see if I press the button that slides up and down so it gives you that instant feeling of either being outdoors or winded up, close the doors and you can be completely protected from the elements. Very clever feature. Then here is the inner sanctum, if you like, the main inside area of the saloon with these oval tables and a big spread of seating that leads through to the helm. So this is all open plan to the lower helm, which has a spectacular glass bridge design. All the software is by Simrad, but just look at the size of that huge wide screen where you've got all the controls that can be divided up however you want, displaying different elements for navigation, and then a raised helm seats, a real command driving position. 
Now a big hundred footer like this, you're going to need crew. And on board the S10, there is a completely separate crew area. So there's access down from the starboard quarter of the saloon down into the galley. So this is the main galley for the yacht, which is down below next to a small crew mess. So all the catering happens here. And in order to get the food up, there is in fact a little dumb waiter lift. So this, you can see the electronic buttons that will whiz the food up onto the main deck. So the galley, the chef can be down here preparing the food and the serving staff can be upstairs, upstairs and delivering the food around the yacht, whether that's up on the flybridge or into the dining area. And of course, there's a couple of crew cabins. There's a bunk cabin there separate bathroom and a second single captain's cabin in here. And given that this is the crew area, they also have direct access to the engine room where you'll find those two big MTUs putting their combined 5,200 horsepower into the sea through conventional shafts. And then if you creep further aft, you can see the Seakeeper stabiliser that keeps everything on an even keel, even when you're at anchor. So as well as having access out both sides of the helm station to the side decks, there's also the staircase leading down to the main accommodation deck that curves down into the belly of the ship. And then you turn right into the owner's cabin. Now this is really quite special because it's a proper island berth. You can walk all the way around this berth. So it's absolutely in the middle of the cabin itself. There's floor space all around it and you can walk all around the bed. It's just that amazing feeling of space. It just makes it feel more luxurious than a cabin where the bed is hard against a bulkhead. This gives you a better idea of the full scale of this cabin and just how much space there is around that bed. It's absolutely huge. And as well as space, you've got some glorious detail. You can see this almost torpedo shaped dressing station, beautifully done with this marquetry finish to it and a leather vanity unit, which can be left down and tucked away. Beautiful woodwork. Look at those triple hinges on that one locker door. Magnetic latches, walk-in wardrobe. Again, lots of lovely detail. You can probably see the curvature on that worktop. Beautiful drawers, all lined with a kind of linen effect finish. Again, kind of metallic gauze behind here, lit by these special lights gives it a really special feeling. That mirror is of course a TV when it's switched on, but during the daytime it's just a large mirror. A little sofa over on this side, big opening ports, and then through into the ensuite bathroom. Again, beautifully finished. I don't know if you can see the grain in the marble here, but it's absolutely lovely. Big walk-in shower, kind of bronze effect the taps rather than conventional stainless steel. It's like a bronze finish and a separate heads compartment. It is a really special owner's cabin. Even the storage space, rather than just having the usual row of drawers, they're all slightly different and asymmetric. So that one opens up all on soft touch hinges. That one opens that way. That one opens to the top. Everything just feels a little bit special and unique. Now moving forward from the owner's cabin, there is a couple of steps up into the guest accommodation. Then on the starboard side, there's a double guest cabin. Again, big enough to walk all the way around the bed. Of course, there's plenty of headroom in here. You can see from me, there's a good five or so inches above. En suite, as you'd expect, that same marble bronze finish. There's another guest cabin over on the port side, this time a twin. 
And even here, there's some nice little touches. Look at these bed lamps. That's tiny little perforations that let the light seep out. Just really thoughtful touches. That's on suite two. And then through to the VIP in the bows, which is unusual because rather than the bed being down the center line facing right forward in this direction, it's offset to one side. So that bed is coming out of the starboard section of the bow. But again, you can walk all the way around the bed. There's some nice artworks in here. They're really trying to introduce a feeling of bespoke artwork and sculpture rather than just a production yacht. So everywhere you look, there are little touches. Again, the marquetry in there, that nice curvature on the drawers, that linen inside. And here too, there's another solution. All bespoke for the boat. No exposed handles. It's all concealed to keep it as minimalist and stylish as possible. Again, even curvature on the bulkhead here. This time it's a kind of gloss white finish. And the ensuite bathroom here with the shower behind the door. It's a very different feeling. I think Azimuts are now some of the most distinctive yachts on the market. They've been really brave with their choice of interior styling in particular, but also with this boat with the Alberto Mancini exterior styling. It's a very unique proposition. And I really think it's paid off. They've created a hundred foot yacht with a completely unique style and a completely unique flow around the boat. And then there's one final area to have a look at, which is up on the foredeck. And you really get a feel for how big this space is too. It is after all a sports cruiser, not a big flybridge yacht. So it's a very sleek, low design. And look at some of the mooring gear here. I mean, this is like jewelry. It's absolutely beautiful. Huge, chunky, highly polished stainless steel, twin anchors. And look at this work on the forepeak, the actual guardrail. Can you see there's a carbon fiber weave in there? And then this rectangular section steel rather than just a conventional tube. It just makes everything feel precious and unique. And being azimuth, it's got that slight squared off look right on the bow. And just look back at that view up there. You can see how far that windscreen extends above the helm station. It is a very cool looking yacht. Uh, this is where you can install the poles for support, a sun awning over this whole area. You can see that on one side they've got the table raised so you can use that for dining and on this side they've got it sunk to make it into a sun pad. So you could have two sun pads there or you could have them both set up as tables. And this guardrail here is all carbon fibre. Azimut put a lot of effort into using carbon fibre wherever possible, either to maximise the performance of the boat on something like this, or to create more volume, but not with the penalty of weight that normally comes with it. And while we're here walking down the side deck, you can just see that window in the dining area I was talking about, how it opens and closes to make it an indoor outdoor area. Now you can see how it's come out and slid down. When it's closed, it obviously goes up and then motors in so that it fits flush with the rest of the window line. So there you have it. That is a very brief tour of Azimuth's S10, a sensational 100 foot sports cruiser that really does look and feel completely different to anything else on the market. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.